Follow Helen Paul and I, Frank Donga. Do you know that Nigeria is the third largest producer of ginger in the world? Maybe that's why we have this ginger touch. Ginger, oh, ginger. And time's up. As we uncover the untold stories of food heroes on the front lines. If I have money, I will maximize this place. I have the capacity to plant 500 hectares a year. Parasites is the major problem also in farming. Connecting them to untapped opportunities and the experts who can solve their problems. You can't plant the same time somebody can plant. Nice plant. We have to follow the NAMIT report to know when the rainfall and you know, the best plant. So that is the challenge. If tomato touches the water, then it starts rotting. Tomato should not touch the water. This is Farm and Fortune. Tonight on Farm and Fortune. But even with the complaints, since they don't have any alternative, even with the complaints that they have raised, they still sell to us anyway. So at the moment, nobody's regulating the industry. I can say nobody. The first person to drop the answer wins the game. It's all coming up right now. Huh. What? Shall we get another letter? Mr. Frank, we always have letter in this show. Wait till they talk again, no? One of our viewers sent us letter, says, uh, Ah, they will call us dear. Yeah. Dear Frank and Helen, I always enjoy watching your show. Thank you. Keep up the good work. We will try. I currently discovered that nuts are generally a healthy snack. It's true. And I have been trying to eat a lot more. Mm. My question is, mm -hmm. why are those nuts so expensive when we grow them in Nigeria, mm. especially cashew? Mm. His name is James from Lagos. James, I understand what you are saying, no, and I agree with you. you know, those cashew nuts, eh? No be here. If you ask for the price in supermarkets, you will fear. Eh, but truly, truly, when we are producing cashew in our country, mm. how come it's, it's so expensive? Who is even determining the price, Steph? I don't know. All I know is that we have an expert coming to the show today that will tell us all about cashew. Just grab a cup of your cashew <laughs> and cold water and join us. My name is Ellen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And you're welcome to Farm, Farm and, and Fortune. Fortune. Welcome back. As you may have guessed, we're still discussing cashew on this episode of Farm and Fortune. And to discuss that with us, we have a very special guest in the building who is a veteran researcher in this cashew business. He is no other person but Dr. Femi, Olufemi Ibiremo. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Welcome, sir. Me. I personally want to learn more from you. I appreciate you. Um, but my first question, what is the value of cashew in Nigeria at the moment? <clears throat> Before we talk about value, we should first of all ask, mm -hmm. what is the production level of cashew? Because you have the produce before it translates to value. Even the industry in general. Uh, 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 presently, Nigeria produces about 260,000 metric tons. Mm. And uh, when you look at that, it translates to about 61.5 billion, billion naira. Hmm. 61.5 billion, billion naira. naira. Ah. Okay. And uh, Nigeria over the years uh, has made a lot of money from cashew hmm. export. We, that was the time Nigeria surpassed over 250 million US dollar, million US dollar. But that is not the end of the story, because uh, as it is, we, 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 are, we, we are worth more than what we are earning. That is, Nigeria should get more than that, because by the time we put some policies in place, we should get several food of what we are getting. Hmm. But who are the key players of our Nigerian cashew industry? Uh, so many of them. Like the primary one is the farmers along the value chain. Okay. Mm. Then we have the buying agents, the licensed buying agents, mm. village buying agents. Then we have the local buying agent. So all these people, they, they, for the they buy for the exporters. Mm -hmm. The another one is the exporters, the the merchant, they export. 
Then we have the processors. Mm. Then we have the National Cashew Association of Nigeria. Then we have some subnational groups, like some of these uh, cooperative uh, okay. cashew cooperative in the various communities. So it looks like there's a lot of money going on. I mean, mm -hmm. people like Helen Paul that love to invest. Yeah, I'm sure money. they will see opportunities in that. But in all this money we are talking about, you know, and those are the millions and billions. Okay. Does it really translate to success and income at this level for the farmer? Um, yes, to some extent, sure. yes. Mm. What I mean is that uh, ten years ago or eight years ago, they were buying a kilo for 90, 80 naira. Mm. So, but now they now buy the same kilo for four hundred dollar, yeah. four fifty. A kilo of processed cashew. No, 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 no. Of oh. raw cashew. Raw cashew not. from the farm. Yes. Four hundred dollar. No, naira. Oh. So what we are saying that truly is increasing. But when you also look at the purchasing power of the naira now, the inflation, mm. you see that uh, the thing has not really improved because yes. of that. Uh, we see that we are moving. But I know that there's so much to be done in the cashew industry, policy, other issues that will help the farmer get the needed uh, income and, uh, from their labor. Hmm. There is no reason why Cote d'Ivoire should be producing 1.2 million mm -hmm. and Nigeria is producing 260,000 metric tons. The, the gap is too wide. Thank you very much, Doctor. I mean, it looks like there are so many things involved between the farmer to the end consumer or whether an exporter. Mm. But, you know, what's really, uh, who is really benefiting the most? Is it the producer, the farmer, the, 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 the processor or the exporter? This agents, agent, every time, agents, even if in a house rent, agent, agent. <laughs> Let's see what agents are doing to cashew distribution and the value chain in Nigeria. When you choose to play on the fields of the ancient agrarian marketplace, consider a good coach to take along with you. The Udongo app is your gateway to the Nigerian agricultural ecosystem. Whether you are a newbie or an oldie, signing up instantly connects you with a community of other farmers, products, agents, distributors and resources all in one place. Access our unique and simple interface from the bustling big cities to the most remote regions across Nigeria. Enjoy full access to real-time farming solutions that help you make timely and profitable decisions. Or allow our one-on-one -on -one consultancy services cheer you on with each move you make. As a newbie or oldie looking to make a big agricultural footprint, feel secure knowing you have the best coach always in your pocket. Udongo app is your personalized farming coach, available to you every time, anywhere, just at the click of a button. Download the Udongo app from the Google Play Store now and enjoy new opportunities. For cashew to travel from the farmer's land to the consumer's table, it goes through several hands, and every time it passes on, value is exchanged. The value may, however, be different for each stakeholder in the value chain. We normally sell like a per kilo of cashew, 200 naira, sometimes 300, sometimes it can be less than. So it depends on the market. Like the previous one, this, the kilo it was around um, 400. For Salami, the cashew farmer, his job ends when the agents bring their skill to buy kilograms of his cashew. He has no idea how far his cashew will travel or how much it will generate. He's just happy to have sold out. We always buy in measures. Though uh, we talk of kilos now, here we talk of measures. Let's say about 500 naira per kilo when it is good. We hand over to edges that come to us directly from Ibadan and buy. Uh, and, and also some of the retired bankers who also patronize this. So we have them around when it is time, the signal us that they'll be coming to buy and so on. So for exact companies that buy these things there, no, I don't have access to the names. But uh, they are all there in a burden. For the agent, his perspective is different. He is the much needed link between the farmer and the company. He knows the farmer does not know how to sell without him, and the company enjoys the convenience he provides. He holds the joker 
and he uses it to his advantage. The farmers will always complain, you are the people you don't farm, but you only come to part from us. Go and farm yourself. These are the natural languages we normally get from them. But even with the complaints, since they don't have any alternative, even with the complaints that they have raised, they still sell to us anyway, because there are no other alternatives. If there were standard markets here, you know, definitely that buy at higher price, we would have been defeated in our agency. Why I play the role of the agents is for the fact that the market situation is very scarce. And so we play that role because we at least have one or two places where we can be able to send these things to. The poor marketing structure for cashew had been the bane for the promotion or for the advancement of cashew production in Nasrallah State. Without a doubt, so much value is exchanged within Nigeria's cashew sector. The question is, who is managing the sector to ensure everybody gets an equitable slice of the pie? Is there any hope for balance? Now, wow. Agent, oh. Agent is just catching out 10 years. Agent house rent, agent office, agent <laughs> school, agent even to hey. cash. Cash we don't see. Now, agent, several of us will come now. No more farmer. Be, instead, no, instead of farmer, more colors just become agents. Yes, sir. If we become a tenant, we'll go find out who go the plant. Dr. Ibrahim. Yeah. The disparity, why is it like this now? Hey, it's very simple. <laughs> When you operate in an unregulated uh, environment, okay. so people do a lot of things to cheat others. Hmm. That's what we have seen. That is why I was, I was talking about the, the government should look at the issue of reconstituting the way. Commodity boards. The commodity boards. Mm, yes. What would they do differently? Because we have seen now that yes. there are so many agents that will handle cash. Yes. 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 Why a long team? Yeah. When we have more people, it means more people are involved in the in the sector. That is one. But what the agent, I mean, the board will do differently is that at this time nobody regulates the prices. Okay. That's why you are. But when the board is there, they said this is what Nigerian cash will eat. We cost per ton, and that goes down to everybody. Would they also regulate the quality or give guidance? Definitely. Okay. That is quality assurance, mm. the pricing. So nobody can come from anywhere and call now one man somewhere mm. and say, because, uh, you know, I gave you input to, uh, last time when you wanted to start your last year. So I'm going to buy it for 200 naira per kilo. Because that and that man was looking for Money. The uh, fee, uh, the school fees of his children. Mm. So the man has no option. So and the man maybe wants to be faithful. He will now submit the thing. Mm. He has no. But where the government is involved, where the, there's a regulatory body involved, mm. nothing like that. Even those inputs we are talking about, they could even help them to procure it. So at the moment, nobody is regulating the industry. I can say nobody. Hey. Mm. The uh, what we can see. The Federal Minister of Agri is doing some intervention. The Federal Minister of Trade and Industry also is also doing its own. The Nigeria Export Promotion Council mm. also is also doing, but it's like you know, no, no uh, everybody's business mm. is nobody's business. Doctor, I want to ask you que one question about the law and the cash farmer in Nigeria. Are there any laws protecting the farmer, the cash farmer in Nigeria that you are aware of? Uh, from exploitation. As, yes. As it is now, you know, I told you, they, there's no regulatory body. Mm. So everybody catches on, on the situation. You say the agents are cheating the farmers. They have to, because nothing is restricting them. If there is a law, if they flout the law, there will be sanction. But when they don't have any something uh, um, entering them or restricting them, they can do and undo. You know, I told you, when I, I went to Kogi State some times ago, I, I, I saw some Vietnamese in the farm. Hmm. Buying something, they stay. You are carrying your own. Mama, come. They come, they buy. That should be. You can't go to India and get to their plantation. It's not, even the same place, there are people that are coming from uh, Vietnam, uh, the Vietnam. You can't go there and get to their plantation. 
Mm. But in Nigeria, everybody, everybody can come. So, sir, in general, what can we do? How can youths come in, all these youths studying agriculture, how can they go into this industry? How can we give them free hands to do business? Okay. Um, I think our orientation has to change. Uh -huh. Because uh, when our politicians, they want to empower youth, go and buy machine. This uh -huh. Okada. And give them two, two. You're, uh, maybe two of them. You, two of you. Now snap it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and put on color. Grinding machine. This and this. But what I'm saying, our uh, empowerment should not be like that. Uh. As the politician, can they give their family member Okada as a means of uh, livelihood? Mm. Mm. Definitely nobody will do that. Mm. People that are riding Okada today, I can see it anywhere. They are managing to assist. Mm. The business, yeah. Because every money, they wake up very early to carry people, their chest, the, the the wind that is blowing every morning, over some time, some of them, they get pneumonia. Mm. They may say one uh, which somewhere is affecting them, something. But the kind of work they are doing, look at it, the accident. Go to all these orthopedic hospitals, see cut leg, I mean, broken leg, broken bone, bone everywhere. To me, that money they used to buy or cut. If such money is aggregated, they can use it to establish a farm. Mm. And it's a long-time investment. If you buy Okada today, tomorrow the thing has depreciated. Whereas if you invest in Kachu, every day the thing is increasing, the investment is increasing, the value is increasing. Kachu, there's money there. But we need good policy, we need good funding, uh -huh. and we need insurance for the farmers and support for the farmers. Support, support. And talking about work, we know that our DIY guy, do it yourself, guy is waiting on the other side of the break right now to tell you about DIY tricks in Kachu. Not go anywhere. With a come, we we'll cash you very soon. Welcome to the Farm and Fortune DIY Hack. Today, I'll be showing you how to make cashew butter, a delicious spread from cashew nuts. Get dry unsalted roasted cashew nuts, pour into your food processor or blender, and blend with a wide blade. Take a break when cashew nuts become crumbly, then resume blending. Keep blending until you achieve a smooth, pasty consistency. Scoop out into a jar and cover with an airtight lid. Cashew butter can be stored for up to three months in a refrigerator. Expect the same nutty taste you get from peanut butter. Tune in next time for more DIY hacks. Welcome back, Estelle Farm and Fortune. To help my agricultural lifestyle and destiny, I have a soil expert here today to tell us about what kind of soil suits, what kind of crop, especially cashew. We have no other person than Mr. Babajide Ahmed. Good to have you. Thanks, Ellen. It's good to be here. It's good to have you. As the secret of a soil expert, what do you look at in a soil? Well, how do you check soil? I don't understand. Oh, firstly, before you, to, before you go into any planting, eh. you need to carry out a, what you call reconnaissance survey. Eh? Reconnaissance survey. Reconnaissance survey. Definitely, you look at the soil. If the soil is sloping, it's going to be a danger point because if I apply fertilizer, it's going to go down the slope. So this uh, crop on the upper part will not get enough fertilizer. Then after carry, carrying out reconnaissance survey, you need to carry a GPS to know the location of the soil. Ah, wait, for, GPS for, yes, for motto? Yes, you have to get GPS um, coordinates of the place. GPS will direct you. No, you have to get the coordinates of the place for future reference purposes. Okay. Then you now carry out what they call soil testing. Okay. Soil testing will enable you to know the particular nutrient that is deficient or more in the soil. You can't just go to the soil and say you want to plant something. Mm. Just like if you are feeling not feeling well, say so you want to take paracetamol, anti-malaria, mm. or something like that. You don't know the particular sickness that is, that, is, um, that is affecting you. But when you carry out soil testing, you'll be able to know mm. the nutrients that are present in the soil, mm. if there's a need to apply or supply a particular nutrient element, or apply organic manure. I even know my sickness. It's not more than hunger. Ah. I will not tell you like. So you having carried you. out the soil yeah. testing, yeah. then you cannot know the fertilizer recommendation for the particular plant, then you go ahead to get a seed, a viable seed from a good source. Okay. Then you now prepare your land, do your tillage, 
after doing your tillage. If there's a need, if the nutrient element is low, after applying, before applying fertilizer, you need to yes. carry out mulching, organic manure, ah. protect the soil, uh -huh. enhance water holding capacity of Cut the soil, this. prevent excess sunlight from destroying the soil, prevent erosion, because when the soil is not covered enough and there's intense rain, it can lead to erosion. Hmm. And that is another problem again. Hmm. Hmm. If not that you came here today, I would know that even the soil uses GPS. Next on the show is the game segment. And you know, on Fam and Fortune, we don't just play, just entertain, educate. We do everything balancing up. So let's go and enjoy the game. Don't go anywhere. Enjoy game time. It's game time on Farm and Fortune, and you know how we do it here. Well, actually, this time around, it's a little bit different. Next week is going to be our grand finale, where the competing farmers compete for the grand prize of 500,000 Naira worth of farming pews. But this week is a little different. We put out two of our fans from our social media platforms, and they're going to be competing for a prize of 50,000 Naira worth of farming pews right here. Today, the rules are very simple, although the stakes are still high. It's just answering questions, and every time they get a question right, they put a cashew nut inside a glass container in front of them. At the end of the 10 questions, whoever has the highest number of cashew nuts wins the game. It's that simple. All right, and to play the game with me, two of our fans that watch us on TV, on social media, have come into the studio. And right here on my immediate left, I have Mr. star, Samson Babalola. You're welcome to the show. Thank you, sir. And I have Onye Mora. Good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Are you both farmers too, or are you a farm enthusiast? Mm. Mm, not farmers yet. OK, not farmers yet, but you well, love farming. Yes, my parents are farmers, so some, from time to time, I visit farms. Beautiful. Shop. Beautiful. Yes. And Samson, what do you think about the show? The show is awesome. Like, the show is very educative. People learn a lot, like someone like me, like I learn a lot. Like, the show is awesome. Good. All right, are you ready to win 50,000 Naira worth of farm impute? Sure, sir. Okay, sure, let's go. Sir. Question one. What are the official colors of farm and fortune? Um, light blue and green. Oh, time up. Yes, you only have five seconds to okay. answer your question. But you put it in before five seconds. I would have told you to put half of a cashew nut. <laughs> cashew nut. There. What do we do now? Do you allow her to put half of a cashew nut in the jar? It's actually good. <laughs> Sorry. Question two. Okay. Samson, how many episodes did season one have? Six. Correct. So you got to put one cashew nut in the glass jar. Next. Gunye, name three crops from season one. From season one. Mm. Are you serious? <laughs> okay, that's gone. I'm sorry. Okay. Next question, Samson. What are the names of the hosts for season one? Fanto, Gan, and Elipo. Correct! You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Drop one cash in out into the glass. <laughs> there you have. The next question to Onye. Tomatoes in greenhouses grow faster because we plant them on... Cocoa plates and crates. Correct! <laughs> Drop that. Cashew nut in the glass jar. Yeah. Good. The next question goes to Samson. What is the full meaning of F-I-S-S? -S? Five seconds. Yeah. No idea. Okay, move on. The next question to Oinye. Okay. How many tons of tomatoes are estimated to be produced? 2.3 million. Why? You did well. You are correct. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. Samson, your turn. Who was the farmer on season one, episode two? I'm sorry. <laughs> After this session, we have to count how many cashew nuts you have oh. in your glass. So okay. let's start from Onye. Okay. Okay. Let's count. Two, 
It looks like we have two here. Sure. Brilliant. That was a good attempt. Thank you, sir. And now, Samson is two. <laughs> one book and one two. <laughs> <laughs> Samson, you dropped two cashew nuts <laughs> in your container, but one broke and split into two. Uh, it's still one. It. <laughs> oh my goodness. So it's a tie. We're going to have a tiebreaker, and that's going to be the sudden death on the show, Found My Fortune. When there's a tie like this, we ask a sudden death question. Hmm. The first person to drop the answer wins the game. Are you ready? Sure, sir. How many segments were in each episode of season one of Farm and Fortune? How many segments? How many segments did we have in the episodes of Farm and Fortune season one? Okay. Nobody wants to press the bell? <laughs> segments, okay. How many segments? Five, 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 five. You know the rules. <laughs> okay, we have Samson Babalola. Has pressed the bell. 18 segments in each episode of the season one of my fortune. That was the wrong answer, ladies and gentlemen. So automatically, Oye has won 50,000 naira worth of impute. Oh my god. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Well, I'm not happy today, sincerely. Not only you. Ah, cashew farmers, they deserve more. They deserve more than this. You know, why can somebody suffer so much and eh, so many roadblocks? Not only them, especially a lot of farmers in Nigeria. But let's cheer up. At least some people want to win 500,000 naira worth of farming puts. You know, ah, farm in our final? Yes. That's true. Next week is our grand finale gen, for gen. the game show. Gen, gen. <laughs> ah, I'm happy now. 500,000 yes. era, eh? Farming pills. And you can join the conversation now, mm -hmm. you know. Join online and let us know who you are supporting. Who are you rooting for? Use the hashtag Farm and Fortune Finale. My name is Ellen Paul. And I'm Frank Donga. And see you next, next week. week.